In this video, I will be covering everything we know about Starfield's Starship building system so far. I will break down all of the information that has been shown and I will also analyse that information to help formulate some solid speculations on what some less clearer topics could be. Space exploration is possible thanks to your ship. However, your ship can also be your home. You won't be the only one calling your ship home, however, as you can station companions and characters on your ship to serve as crew members. Your starting ship is called the Frontier. You have the option to modify the ship or to leave it as it is. You are not stuck with this ship, however, as you can purchase new ships from shipyards. Once you are ready to customise your ship, you will be sent into the ship blueprint screen where you can move and change different modules to your liking. The customizations have different ship manufacturers for different parts. I can see some manufacturers making budget parts where others make premium parts which will excel certain aspects of your ship. In this clip, we can see a Titan 350 HE3 tank which will increase your ship's health and jump fuel. This module is being attached to the hull of your ship. The hull will most likely be the most important part of your ship as it will determine how many modules you can add to your ship. At the top right of the screen, we can see the price of the Titan 350 HE3 tank. Yes, it does seem quite expensive. And it has been stated by Todd Howard on a podcast that shipbuilding will be very expensive and will be an end game activity. This does not mean that you can't customize your ship until the end game. It just means that sh building your dream ship will take some time and more importantly, credits. We can see many stats on the bottom of the screen, which gives us a lot of information. Laz is at 104. This is your ship's laser weapon damage. BAL is at 65. This is your ship's ballistic weapon damage. And F MSL is at 26, which is your ship's missile damage. I'm sure that different damage types will be more effective depending on the types of ships that you'll be facing. Laser weapons will punch through shields more easily, whereas ballistic weapons will do more damage to the hull of the ships. Next up, we can see the hull health of the ship is at 582, the shield of the ship is at 220, and the cargo capacity of the ship is at 450. Similar to the different weapon types, it'll be important to pick which health stat to upgrade first depending on what enemies you'll be facing. For example, space pirates will probably have ballistic weapons and missiles preferred over laser weapons, whereas military or police ships may have more laser power. This is of course a speculation, however you get my point. The cargo stat will be how many resources you can carry on your ship. This will be vital for players that want to load up on supplies and then go and build mining outposts all around the star system, as outposts need materials to build, not credits. So. Whether you want to be a space pirate, smuggler, or explorer, you have plenty of options to maximize your ship's systems. This would be great, not just for stats, but for players who enjoy to roleplay and get immersed in their characters. Gone are the days of just customizing your outfit. Now your ship will show your character's traits as well. Next up, we can see the jump range stat at 23LY. This stat will be for traveling to different star systems. The higher the jump range, the further you will be able to travel. However, if your jump range is low, you will still be able to travel major distances by plotting courses through different star systems, like a dot to dot picture. Each jump will most likely cost fuel. So the further your jump range, the more fuel efficient that your ship will be. So if you want to travel to the other end of the galaxy as quick as possible, then make sure to upgrade your jump range first. Another stat shown is mobility which in this example shows at 100. I assume mobility will be the turn radius and turn speed of your ship in orbit. If your ship has a load of cargo and is really large, then I imagine that it will, be, it will decrease your mobility. So if you want to be a space pirate who takes out other ships and gets into plenty of space flight combat, then the mobility stat will be a definite upgrade for you. Top speed is the next stat sitting at 150 here. This will be your top speed when flying around in space. I mentioned earlier that your jump range will change how far you can grab jump. So this means the top speed will most likely only affect your speed as you're free roaming around space. Similar to mobility, 
I can see this stat being very important for fighter ships who tend to get into more combat than other ships. Mass is the final stat on this bar. I'm not 100% sure what this stat will exactly do. However, I can see needing to balance out engine power and mass to keep your ship from having a slow speed and low mobility. This goes back to my point of a large cargo ship being slower as it has more mass. However, if you have the credits, then upgrading your engines in this scenario would not be a bad idea. We can also see the name of your ship in the bottom left of the screen, with the shipyard or cities underneath it. I can see you being able to change the name of your ship. For those that want to live out their smuggling dreams as Han Solo, can do so whilst also piloting the Millennium Falcon, or bounty hunters can fly the Slave One. I can really see some creative individuals making some famous ships from other franchises with this system. I'm excited to see what they do. We can see here 14 tabs of different parts with hubs, landers and reactors being shown. Similar to the outpost system, these tabs will switch between the different types of modules and parts that you can place on your ship. When placing an item on your ship, you'll be able to see how the item directly affects your ship's stats. As shown in this example, we can see mobility is going down by minus one and mass is going up by plus four. This also strengthens my point that mass will have a direct correlation at the effectiveness of your ship's speed and mobility. We can also see the hull stat being increased by three. This also confirms the hull stat will be your ship's health bar and shields will need to be depleted first before your hull can be damaged. There may be some weapons which bypass shields, but do less damage to the hull. That could be a strong choice of weaponry. One important factor to note about starship building and customization is that to customize your ships, you will require skills for some parts. Not all modules will require skills. As we can see here, these engines do not require a skill to make. However, this landing module requires a starship design skill. So similar to Fallout 4 with the local leader perk, you'll be locked out of some items unless you build your character specifically for starship building. Changing the modules is not the only customization available, as you can also change each module's paint scheme. This is a great feature and will really enhance the options for space pilots to customize the ships to their liking. Changing the color of your ship does not seem to cost any credits, so customize to your heart's content. To summarize everything that I covered in this video, you'll have the ability to completely customize the look and feel of your ship. Customizing each module and maximizing your stats will be vital depending on the purpose that you want to fulfill using your ship. Whether you want to be the first person to explore each star system or an elite space pilot who can gun down any opponent, your ship will be your tool. If you are as excited as I am, and make sure to subscribe as I will be making plenty more Starfield content. If you liked this video and learned anything new, then make sure to give it a like. I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you're most excited for in Starfield. Leave a comment below. Thank you for watching my Starfield Starship Building Breakdown. Take care.